let us take a, a recap of B, C, what we have learned so far. Uh, we'll uh, talk about this pressure and number equations. But uh, very importantly, uh, what we have seen is that if uh, there are a large number of particles, which are bosons, uh, and these bosons have no uh, occupancy restriction uh, that how many bosons can occupy a given quantum state, uh, in that case, um, under certain conditions, uh, it is shown that the excited state occupancy is uh, restricted or it is bounded by some value. So, if the number of particles or number of bosons in the system are much larger than that, uh, then the rest of the particles will occupy the zero uh, energy state or the ground state of the system. And uh, this number can be extremely large because uh, the ground state has really infinite occupancy, which is what we have shown. And um, based on that, uh, we now this state is called as the Bose-Einstein condensate. Uh, so, uh, this we have gotten from uh, two equations, which are the pressure and the number equations. Now, uh, we will uh, recall them uh, just once and then uh, go on to discuss critical temperature. That is the temperature below which such a condensate uh, occurs or um, you know and above that is an ideal Bose gas with no condensation property, which means that uh, at uh, larger temperature T greater than T C, uh, there is occupancy, these all these bosons can occupy all the available energy states and there is no condensation. The third thing that we will do is that we will discuss uh, in brief Bose-Einstein integrals and uh, talk about the Riemann zeta functions, uh, which are very important in this case, because there is a particular Riemann zeta function, which we have seen. Um, which puts a restriction on the number of uh, particles and so on. And the pressure uh, expression also involves another Riemann zeta function and so on. Uh, we will talk about the order of phase transition. Now, this is a very important discussion. It is uh, important to uh, you know uh, decipher what uh, would be the order of phase transition, because we are clear that there is a phase transition occurring from uh, a gas of uh, free bosons in uh, occupying all quantum states of the system and below a certain temperature uh, the number of uh, all the, the ground state is macroscopically occupied. So, this is the transition that is occurring and we need to know about the phase transition or the order of the phase transition and similar phase transitions you know we will do later uh, in a different context. Uh, we'll talk about this um, the temperature dependence of fugacity and the chemical potential, and uh, we'll derive uh, expressions for pressure and internal energy um, of a Bose gas, and um, uh, finally we'll talk about the specific heat, which would uh, eventually comprehensively answer this uh, order of the phase transition. Um, or rather it will sort of create some uh, kind of confusion that uh, this uh, specific heat would be shown to be continuous um, across a transition and it is only the derivative of the specific heat is discontinuous. Okay, so, that uh, would uh, eventually you know have to be uh, have to be settled that uh, what is really the order because uh, uh, a de normal definition or rather the traditional definition of phase transition is which order of free energy becomes discontinuous and that decides the order of phase transition. Let us look at the uh, velocity distribution of the Bose gas. This we have seen before. Uh, this is uh, T c greater than T um, or rather so T greater than T c, I am so sorry, T greater than T c and this is T equal to T c and this is T less than T c. So, uh, you see that there is a peak that is developing uh, at the center of this uh, plot. And this is actually the V x and V y, the velocity plots and um, it is uh, you know it is shown as V z. So, we can write it as V z as here. So, this can be written as V z. Anyway, so what it means is that um, uh, it is a density of particles uh, in the V x equal to 0 and V z equal to 0 are increasing okay? and the dimensions of these uh, systems are shown. So, that tells you that the particles are cooling down. So, the, uh, the velocities are going to 0 and uh, you have this density decreasing which now these particles actually correspond to k equal to 0 state because V x uh, or and V z or V x and whatever if you call it V x and V y then uh, these are the velocities. Thus, so, largest number of particles 
correspond to this velocity equal to 0 and they, hence they must be corresponding to k equal to 0 and that is the zero energy state that we uh, talked about that is macroscopic accumulation of particles. Okay. We will come back to this and uh, so let me remind you of these uh, pressure and uh, number equations. So, the pressure of an ideal Bose system is written as 1 over lambda cube and this g 5 by 2 z f uh, once again lambda is equal to h over root over 2 pi m k t and um, uh, this uh, g 5 by 2 are called as a Bose Einstein integral z f is equal to exponential beta mu and this is a pressure expression. Uh, we have shown that epsilon equal to 0 contribution to the pressure is negligible. In fact, uh, we will show that uh, when all this ground state of the system is macroscopically occupied, uh, the 0 uh, energy state does not exert any pressure. So, around t equal to tc, there will be some smaller number of particles in the excited states and the entire pressure of the Bose gas would be due to those particles and nothing that uh, reside in the uh, 0 energy state. Okay. So, and uh, we also have uh, n minus n 0 over v which we call as n e x c over v. This is equal to 1 over lambda cube and a g 3 by 2 z f. Okay. So, these are like these two important equations of our uh, for our consideration the pressure goes as this uh, g 5 by 2 uh, z f and 1 by lambda cube and this is 1 by lambda cube g 3 by 2 z f. And uh, we know that um, this uh, chemical potential of the Bose gas that approaches 0 from the negative side because uh, uh, the chemical potential of a Bose gas needs to be negative because uh, otherwise the occupancy would be undefined or it would not have any meaning. So, um, now in the limiting case mu approaches 0 from below which means that z f the, uh, the limiting value of z f for our system is equal to 1 or it is uh, in the limit it tends to 1. So, that is the uh, limit that we are talking about and uh, z f to be anything um, other than 1 or uh, you know I mean uh, when we have the classical limit then z f is uh, not close to 1 and z f is very small. Okay. So, it is much much smaller than 1. So, this is what we have uh, done and uh, from there we have shown that uh, these uh, g 3 by 2 z f uh, at z f equal to 1 uh, this uh, this quantity uh, is like 1 plus 1 by 2 to the power 3 by 2 uh, plus all that. This has a closed expression which is called as a Riemann zeta function and this is has a value 2.612. Okay. So, this is very interesting to note that if you write this down in terms of this uh, 2.612. So, n excited by uh, the volume that is the number of particles in the excited state divided by the volume is equal to some xi 3 by 2 or zeta 3 by 2 as a Riemann zeta function divided by lambda cube. So, uh, this is like 2.612 divided by the de Broglie volume. So, the quantum statistics becomes important when these particles are enclosed in a de Broglie volume. Okay. This is what uh, is the quantum limit and so on and of course, uh, we uh, sort of know that uh, your uh, z f is actually obtained from this relation that is n 0 divided by n 0 plus 1 and this is nothing but equal to 1 uh, in the quantum limit or uh, in the let us call it a B C limit okay. and this is what we have been saying and that is why we have put z f equal to 1 in this uh, formula and uh, we got a closed form for this expression. Okay. Now, it is important to uh, you know uh, get the transition temperature this is that is below which temperature or below what temperature what does it depend upon such that the condensate forms that is all these uh, particles they macroscopically occupy the ground state of the system. So, that is the transition temperature uh, of the system. So, uh, above which there is no B C below which there is B C. So, 
and this is very easily obtained from this expression that uh, your total number of particles this n is total n 0 is that corresponding to the ground state n e x c is the number of particles that can occupy all the excited states put together ok. So, this is the convention that uh, people follow and then we are following that as well. So, n uh, has to be now greater than uh, this quantity which is like uh, uh, v t to the power uh, 3 by 2 and then uh, 2 pi m k uh, whole to the power 3 by 2 divided by h cube and this xi 3 by 2 ok. So, this is the critical condition or are not the critical, but the n has to be larger than that for B C to occur. And in that case only the excited states will have uh, restricted occupancy. So, any number that is greater than that would eventually come to the ground state whose occupation is infinite for all practical purposes ok. So, uh, if you convert this um, um, inequality into an equality. So, we will convert this into an equality sign and then calculate the T c uh, equal to uh, h square by 2 pi m k and we have n divided by v and then z 3 by 2 and ok. So, this is the uh, expression for T c what it depends upon it depends upon of course, the mass of the particle and uh, so, mass of the bosons that we are talking about n by v is nothing but called as the density of particles and of course, other uh, fundamental constants such as h and k and so on. Uh, so, it depends upon as I said that uh, these two quantities and um, if you uh, really do this uh, calculate this. Uh, this will give you some number which is uh, if you put uh, uh, say for example, helium 4 uh, and why we are taking this example of helium 4 that is because uh, for long it was considered that helium 4 undergoes a Bose Einstein condensation below certain temperature called as a lambda temperature and this was uh, uh, discovered around uh, 1940 around that time. And there is a lambda point transition uh, at 2.176 uh, Kelvin. So, there is an experimental value and if you actually use this uh, formula that you see above, then if you put uh, mass of this equal to uh, the mass of the helium atoms is equal to 6.65 10 to the power minus 24 grams and the, uh, the specific volume or the inverse of density as uh, 27.6 uh, centimeter cube per mole, uh, then the T c uh, put this into this equation let us call it as equation 1 for now and then the T c comes out to be 3.13 Kelvin and uh, this is not too different from uh, 2.17 Kelvin or 1 8 Kelvin and uh, so, uh, for long this was considered to be a B c or experimental determination of B c um, as I said this was in 1940 around that time, uh, but however, actual B c was discovered much later. So, this uh, is not really B c, but it was uh, understood very quickly by Landau that this is called as a superfluid state. So, below this temperature this lambda point temperature which is 2.17 Kelvin, uh, the uh, bosons or the helium atoms they lose uh, viscosity completely and uh, when they lose viscosity they uh, sort of uh, the, there is a free flow of these atoms and um, it sort of turns out that uh, they do not comprise of or rather the interaction between the bosons of the helium atoms cannot be uh, neglected and hence. Uh, uh, it cannot be termed as B c because B c we have been talking about that it is uh, really in the uh, ideal Bose gas. So, um, so it was kind of um, not taken as an example of B c, but definitely superfluidity happens here in this helium gas. And the superfluid behavior is what we uh, talked about that uh, they lose uh, viscosity completely and uh, become a superfluid ok. 
all right so um, we uh, get this transition temperature and so on so uh, there is a nice uh, picture that emerges and we'll show this picture here and this picture uh, tells you that you see the, there are two lines that you see and where there is a xc and uh, let's call it as tc as we have been calling and then we call it a xc and this is a zf uh, there is just slightly different notations being used here and so what you get is that you get uh, this uh, below t equal to tc if you look at this plot carefully below t equal to tc that is uh, all the way from 0 to 1 you see that the blue line is rising and the red line is falling and the red line is the BC that is the condensate and this is actually the excited state occupancy. Okay. So, basically uh, between T and uh, T equal to 0 and T equal to TC that is between T by TC equal to uh, 1 and this is uh, often termed as reduced temperature small t. So, this is often used in the um, phase transition terminology that you write it uh, like a small t which is a dimensionless parameter. So, that is why there is the x axis has no dimension neither y axis has because this is just a number of particles. Okay. Uh, the just a number and it is a number as well in the uh, x axis. So, uh, between 0 and 1 um, this uh, consists of uh, a two fluid uh, system where uh, there is a condensate uh, density which is given by this N0 which decreases as temperature increases okay? and at some point you know they cross each other which means that the, uh, the condensate fraction and the excited state occupancies are equal and then as T becomes uh, close to TC this thing goes to 0 the red curve goes to 0 which means the condensate fraction goes to 0 and um, these um, excited state occupancy goes equal to N. Okay, so, that is the total number. So, if you add the values of red curve and blue curve at any point they will give you capital N which means the total number of particles. Okay. So, uh, there are uh, so you can understand it that there are these uh, these a ground state or which contains N0 and uh, this the line on top that is uh, including all the excited states which contains NEX number of particles. Okay. So, at any temperature it is a combination or it is a superposition of these two fractions and one of the fractions go to 0 at t equal to T c the condensate fraction and the, uh, the excited state occupancy go to 1 at t equal to T c and then of course, uh, the condensate fraction the red line continues to be 0 and the blue line continues to be 1. So, here uh, we have a gaseous phase. Um, uh, which is the blue line gaseous phase why we are calling it as a gaseous phase as opposed to the condensate phase. So, that contains N e let us call it N e x c or you can call it just N e also. Okay. This is equal to N uh, N into T by T c whole to the power 3 by 2 and um, also it consists of a condensed uh, phase or a condensed set let us call it a condensed set having a n 0 which is equal to n into 1 minus t by t c whole to the power 3 by 2. Okay. Uh, it is important to get this exponent 3 by 2 because this exponent can be uh, easily seen from this uh, lambda cube dependence which we have shown uh, here um, rather here you see that there is a lambda cube dependence lambda goes as uh, uh, t to the power half. So, uh, 1 by lambda cube goes as t to the power 3 by 2 and that is where the, the 3 by 2 uh, fraction comes in. And um, so, this is a, a sort of a phenomenological model to understand that what is happening below t equal to t c and above t equal to t c is very clear all of them are uh, you know allowed to occupy the excited states there is uh, no need for them for a macroscopic accumulation at the ground state at this uh, lowest energy state and all this uh, n excited becomes equal to n. And uh, the experimental uh, verification that you see for the 
condense that fraction, uh, the left hand side is a theoretical thing which we just shown here, the red line is the, the same as this line and uh, you see that there is this experimental curve in for a, a three dimensional and harmonic trap, uh, the particles show this kind of a fall off of the condensed fraction and at t equal to tc, it kind of goes to uh, 0 and then remains 0 thereafter. Okay. All right. So, uh, let me now spend a little bit of time, uh, it is a bit of digression, but it is an important digression because we need to understand this Bose-Einstein integral because a lot of these uh, quantities that we uh, discuss, which means that we discuss about the fugacity of the gas, we discuss about the chemical potential, we discuss about pressure, internal energy, uh, specific heat, etcetera, that all depends upon these uh, dependence of these ZF or mu uh, on temperature because these uh, uh, mu uh, tends to 0 uh, as you know uh, as uh, the Bose BEC occurs, but uh, how it tends to 0 is an important thing because we need to understand the scenario just below the transition that is T just less than Tc, we can call it as T equal to Tc minus and just above Tc which we can call as T equal to Tc plus. Okay. So, this is a important thing and uh, we have to understand the Bose-Einstein integral. So, let me uh, quickly show you the Bose-Einstein integral. We have defined it and let me show you the, uh, the limiting cases and so on. So, we can just write it as uh, g n z, uh, we know z is equal to z f, but uh, we without uh, writing it explicitly as z f for this particular case, we can simply write it as z with z is some quantity, uh, some parameter. Uh, this is defined as x to the power n minus 1 and there is a sum over L equal to, uh, okay, so this is um, uh, really uh, we will do that in just a while, but uh, x to the power n minus 1 uh, z inverse exponential x minus 1 dx. So, this is the integral actually. Uh, now, for small z, um, what we can do is uh, or rather you know uh, you can um, uh, not specifically for small z, but uh, you can do an expansion of this denominator uh, for all values of, if you keep all powers of z, then it can be written as g n z, this is equal to 1 by gamma n, uh, gamma n is a gamma function. So, this is 0 to infinity uh, x to the power n minus 1 sum over L equal to 1 to infinity uh, z e to the power minus x whole to the power L dx. Okay. Um, so, we have this uh, thing as uh, uh, we can just do a bit of simplification for us to be able to cast it in a form that is more familiar. So, it is x to the power minus n and uh, we have a z to the power l here. So, we have a z to the power l uh, x to the power n minus 1 e to the power minus l x because this integral is over x. So, z can be taken as constant and this is dx. Okay. Uh, so, this term is like uh, z e to the power minus x um, plus z e to the power minus 2 x and so on. Okay. So, this we write it like this and if you make a bit of um, substitution that is l x equal to some x prime, then we can write this as uh, sum over l equal to, um, there is a sum over uh, L equal to 1 to infinity, which I forgot here. Okay. So, this and um, uh, then uh, we have a z to the power L gamma to the power n and because of this transformation, we have uh, a 1 by L to the power n minus 1 and x prime to the power n minus 1 exponential minus x prime and we have a dx prime by L. Okay. Uh, this is just simple uh, by this substitution of uh, L x is written as some other variable which is x prime. Okay. So, uh, I will uh, 
come to uh, this in just a while and uh, uh, let me um, you know uh, sort of uh, write it here and then we will come back to this and this is equal to uh, okay we can write it here as well okay so this is equal to um, l equal to 1 to um, infinity and z to the power l l to the power n and this is zeta function zeta of n and where we have used that uh, the gamma function is defined as uh, 0 to infinity and x to the power n minus 1 uh, e to the power minus x e to the power minus x dx and uh, so this uh, on a general footing that this is a definition of the Bose Einstein integral and we know that we have uh, z is same as the fugacity zf and zf takes a value uh, the BC limit it takes a value equal to 1 and um, uh, these are the things that are of importance I mean uh, these uh, xi of uh, you know uh, these uh, 3 by 2 uh, which uh, is what we get uh, this is equal to uh, this value which is 2.61238 uh, in fact just the first uh, three digits are used uh, which we have seen. So, this uh, this Riemann zeta function is plotted as a function of this z or what we call as uh, you know n here. Uh, so, it is uh, plotted as a function of n and at n equal to uh, 1. Um, that is at zf equal to okay so this is actually the uh, the riemann zeta function which is z okay and uh, this at z equal to 1 um, uh, in fact the way we have defined it let's keep it as n which is 3 by 2 but this is knowing that this is at zf equal to 1 so uh, this is the the kind of curve that you get for xi uh, 3 by 2 and um, so this is important because uh, we would be you know um, interested in various temperature dependencies which are important ok. So, uh, now let us see that how uh, z f um, depends on temperature. And um, so, what we have is that uh, instead of temperature, what you can say is that uh, let us see the variation of z f, uh, variation of z f with uh, v over lambda q ok. Uh, now, this v is called as a specific volume where uh, small v equal to capital V by n ok. Uh, so, it is known that lambda uh, varies as t to the power minus half. Uh, so, v over lambda cube that varies as t to the power 3 half. So, now the temperature dependence of the fugacity will come through this v by lambda cube. So, we are interested in the region uh, where uh, we have this 0 less than t less than t c. Uh, so, we are interested in this region and um, uh, in this region uh, you have 0 less than uh, uh, so uh, v by lambda cube 0 is less than equal to v by lambda cube is uh, less than equal to that 2.612 that number which is uh, that uh, zeta function and um, uh, remember this uh, your n is equal to v t to the power 3 by 2. Uh, divided by h cube and uh, 2 pi m k whole to the power 3 by 2 and this uh, these 3 by 2 and so on so forth ok. And of course, we have uh, z f to be uh, equal to 1 and why it is uh, equal to 1 because this is really equal to 1 minus uh, 1 over n 0 and n 0 being very large the second term goes to 0 um, and so this clearly of course, gives you that lambda cube by v I just invert this remember this equation is the defining equation for 
uh, Tc. So, this is the same equation for Tc. So, if you put uh, uh, this critical value uh, of this n or rather this uh, n has to be larger than that, but if you put a equality sign then you get a Tc. So, lambda cube by V uh, it is um, uh, you know this maximum value of which is equal to 1 uh, to or rather uh, it is 2.612. So, whenever you have uh, v over lambda cube to be much greater than 1, then g uh, 3 by 2 z f uh, will be much much smaller than 1. So, z f will be um, so this is greater than 1 of course, z f will be much much smaller than 1 and this is the classical limit we are not interested in this limit, but we should know that uh, in the limiting case what happens. So, uh, we have in this j n uh, z f expression, we have uh, uh, this expansion is valid, uh, this expansion of this is valid in the classical case. Um, if we are uh, in the limit where z f is very small and uh, will be enough to keep a keep a few terms. So, of the order of z f. Okay. So, z f versus temperature the plot really looks like this okay. for all the way from t equal to t c. So, this is t and this is z f and all the way up to t c it looks like this and then of course, it falls off like this okay. and this is z f equal to 1 and this is equal to z f equal to uh, v by uh, lambda cube or lambda cube by v rather. Okay. So, in this lower than T c, we have the z f nearly remaining constant at a value 1 but as uh, you know you uh, uh, go to temperature larger than T c, then Z f starts falling and this is when the occupancy of the uh, high energy or rather the excited states um, they, uh, they increase and they can now accommodate a large number of particles and, and then of course, that leads to the uh, destruction of the condensate. Okay. So, this is the uh, Z f expression and I will uh, probably do it on a separate uh, platform that uh, how the um, this chemical potential looks like the chemical potential really looks like like this and so mu versus temperature. So, this is the value 0. So, at t equal to 0 mu is equal to 0 in the limiting case and then as temperature increases the uh, mu uh, becomes negative. Okay. All right. So, uh, these are the definitions or rather these parameters how they behave with temperature because we need to understand the condensate properties uh, just below T c and just above T c or uh, if you want to see the critical properties of the condensate that is how it behaves as T tends to T c either from above or below. Uh, mainly we are interested in how it uh, behaves uh, from as T tends to T c from below that is from 0 side and uh, there are now enough evidences that this uh, or rather you understand this condensate much better that is uh, a very large number of particles will start occupying the ground state at low temperature when uh, the fugacity becomes almost equal to 1 and mu becomes almost equal to 0. Uh, then uh, there will be a uh, sort of macroscopic accumulation of particles in the uh, lowest energy state which is called as a Bose-Einstein condensation. Okay. Let us now look at the pressure, pressure of the Bose gas. Okay. This is uh, not too difficult because we already know the expression for pressure which is equal to k t over lambda q. We have written that earlier and this Bose Einstein integral uh, uh, this is. So, this is that index n if you remember and this is that z f. Okay. Okay. And this has a form uh, closed form uh, 
um, which is uh, this uh, the Riemann zeta function. Okay, so this is uh, really equal to the kT over lambda cube, and uh, xi zeta. Sorry, not xi zeta. Uh, this. Okay, now that uh, tells you that uh, lambda. Uh, is uh, since lambda is proportional to t to the power minus half, uh, the pressure of these uh, condensed fraction, this goes as t to the power 5 by 2, right? Because uh, there is a t on top and then lambda cube goes as t to the power 3 by 2, 1 by lambda cube, uh, then this goes as t to the power 5 by 2. So, this uh, tells you that this is independent of the volume. And because it is independent of the volume and then we can write down this um, the compressibility as uh, 1 over v with a minus sign and a del v del p t. Okay. Uh, p is not a function of v. So, this will like a uh, uh, state with uh, infinite uh, compressibility. So, what it means physically is that uh, you can pack any number of particles into the system because we also know that the ground state occupancy is infinite. And uh, because the pressure is independent of the volume, which is very different than the classical ideal gas that we have seen, uh, this is uh, an important result which tells you that uh, the compressibility is infinite and you can pack or you can load any number of particles in the ground state. Okay. Let us just try to calculate what is the pressure uh, at t equal to T c or t less than T c, uh, it hardly makes a difference. So, t equal to T c or even t less than T c because it is constant. So, p at T c, t equal to T c okay, is nothing but I will just uh, uh, have to um, substitute the expression for T c which we have obtained earlier and this is a k T c whole to the power 5 by 2 and this zeta function at this 5 by 2. So, if you substitute T c equal to h square by 2 pi m k uh, and this n divided by v uh, 3 by 2 whole to the power 2 by 3. So, uh, this you substitute here in this and then you get a p at t equal to t c is equal to uh, this uh, nice ratio of these two zeta functions zeta 5 by 2, zeta 3 by 2 and we get this n by v k t c. Okay. This is nothing but the classical pressure or, or pressure of a classical gas uh, and uh, this ratio if you calculate it comes out as uh, because uh, xi of uh, 5 by 2 is equal to 1.341. Let me write down a few zeta functions which um, some of them are actually useful. Uh, this 1 is equal to infinity. Um, and this 3 by 2 is equal to very familiar to us 2.612. Uh, then this is a 2 is equal to some value which is pi square over 6. Uh, 5 by 2 is equal to uh, 1.341 which is what we have written. Let me write down uh, one more. Uh, this is 3 is equal to 2 more. It is 1.202. And uh, finally, we have another one which is equal to pi 4 by 90 and uh, you will see that this the last one would be useful when we talk about the black body radiation. Okay. Uh, this uh, it comes in the Stefan Boltzmann law the uh, intensity of this uh, the radiation intensity. Okay. So, uh, we already need it here, we already need this one here and we finally would need this here. So, the zeta function is very important and uh, you have to understand the zeta function comes over and over again because you are interested in solving the Bose-Einstein integral. This would give you the 
you know expressions for pressure etc. So, these two things that is 1.341 divided by 2.612 gives you a nice number which is very close to 0.5 is 0.5134 and then n by v k t c. Okay. So, um, uh, if you remember that your uh, g uh, 3 by 2 z f if you do not put z f equal to 1, if you put z f equal to 1 that is zeta 3 by 2, but this is equal to lambda cube by v we have seen that and this is nothing but n by v h cube divided by 2 pi m k t that is the lambda cube term whole to the power 3 by 2. Okay. So, uh, one very important uh, result is this one, let me just uh, draw it with a or rather box it here and you see that the pressure at t equal to t c is uh, half of the classical pressure and where is it coming from? It is coming all from the excited state particles, the particles that are there in the excited state. So, at t less than t c there are particles in the excited state which you have seen from this, uh, uh, from this plot right. So, you have particles uh, here which correspond to the excited state occupancy at t less than t c. So, these are the ones which exert all the pressure. So, even if half of you know n k t by uh, v that comes from all these blue the particles that reside in the excited states and the particles that reside in the ground state exert no pressure. And this uh, while calculating this p expression we have actually uh, separated out the pressure due to the ground state particle and have shown that uh, that uh, has no uh, almost this, this can be put to 0 in the limit of infinite volume or in the thermodynamic limit. Okay. So, all these expression that you get uh, or rather all the pressure that you get at t equal to t c or t below t c is entirely due to the excited state occupancy and it is only half of what we have as a classical pressure which is say 76 centimeter of mercury or 760 millimeter of mercury and so on. So, this particular thing will be in a stark contrast with fermionic system because in fermionic system you will see that at t equal to 0 because of the exclusion principle that is a hard core condition that uh, uh, there is no uh, that no two fermions can occupy the same energy state uh, there is enormous pressure okay. and this pressure we are going to calculate but that pressure is extremely large and because of this no occupation constraints on the bosonic system the pressure is very low. Okay. So, this is really that uh, 0.5134 times the pressure that, um, that you get uh, you know uh, for the classical case or the pressure that uh, due to an ideal gas with no of course, no uh, it is a classical pressure. So, no uh, occupancy uh, constraint, no uh, indistinguishability they are all distinguishable and so on. Okay. So, this is an important uh, point that one may want to make. And uh, what happens to uh, for t greater than t c that is we are not talking about much greater than t c, but just say t in the vicinity of t c, but on the larger side that is t greater than t c side. So, p becomes equal to n k t over v uh, g 5 by 2 z f uh, and uh, g 3 by 2 z f and I am not going to put z f equal to 1 because z f starts um, you know deviating uh, from these values. I mean if z is not equal to 1 then it has a temperature dependence which is what we have shown here. Okay. So, at t greater than t c your uh, this side of the plot uh, tells you that how z f falls off, uh, but the expression will still remain that it is z uh, g 5 by 2 z f and g divided by g uh, 3 by 2 z f. So, what happens for t large? So, now say we want to recover the classical limit then uh, you can easily show that g 3 by 2 z f uh, e almost equal to g 5 by 2 z f either of them uh, becomes equal to z f. 
because that is the expansion it is a zf divided by zf square by uh, some denominator plus zf cube by some denominator and so on so forth. But uh, if it uh, the temperature is large enough then it is uh, sufficient to keep only uh, the first power of zf. So, if you put it uh, there in that expression you get this n k t by v which is the classical pressure. So, we get this p v equal to n k t the ideal gas equation that we have been seeing right from the beginning. So, this is the classical gas equation. All right. So, this is uh, uh, quite interesting that uh, as you uh, you recovered the classical limit which you showed because uh, we have said that the Bose distribution actually becomes same as the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution at large um, you know temperature. So, this is the story with pressure and what is the story with internal energy? Uh, this is an important thing that uh, will show that uh, the pressure and internal energy uh, we, which we write by u, they carry the same information because p just differs from u um, in this case as well as in the relativistic case by just a factor. In this case the factor is you know 2 by 3 u by v pressure equal to and in the relativistic case it is uh, p by p equal to uh, one third u by v. Okay. So, uh, this u is uh, can be written as which is the uh, basically the average energy. Uh, okay. So, that is the internal energy because we are talking about a non um, in interacting Bose gas. So, this is the log of z g we have seen that a uh, number of times it is a minus del del beta of uh, the grand uh, ln z uh, g which is the grand canonical partition function. We can uh, convert this into a del del t and uh, del t del beta etcetera etcetera and that a little bit of simplification gives this and a del del t of um, p v over k t um, at uh, you know um, z f and v uh, your uh, your lambda of course goes as 1 by root over of t. So, uh, this one um, uh, I mean uh, I mean do not get this feeling this is that p v over k t is the Bose gas expression which is there in terms of this uh, you know uh, 1 over uh, this uh, uh, this expression that we have started uh, with when we started describing the Bose gas. So, it is not a uh, the, the p is not just a constant. So, p uh, depends on temperature and so on and so forth. So, this is that uh, Bose gas expression. Okay. And uh, so, this is equal to a k t square uh, it will be clear in the next uh, uh, line itself. Uh, this is uh, v and a g 5 by 2 z f and a del del t of uh, uh, of 1 over lambda cube and uh, this is at the z f and uh, well let me write it with a square bracket here z f and v. Okay. So, uh, this is simple and now we just need to you know calculate this thing. So, it is a 3 by 2 k t just del del t of uh, t to the power 3 half. So, that 3 by 2 comes here and we have a v by lambda cube and then we have a g 5 by 2 z f. Okay. Now, you see that this expression is very similar to the pressure expression excepting a factor. So, if you compare the expression for uh, pressure and the internal energy it simply comes as uh, u by v. Okay. So, that tells you that pressure and internal energy carry no different um, you know information. In fact, if you uh, really plot uh, you know p or u um, in fact, uh, p by k t c and um, and all that uh, u by uh, so p over um, uh, n k t c and u over or rather two u over three n k t c. If you plot that, then you get a uh, like this, and uh, that will tell you that this is as a function of uh, t over t c and you, you get a transition uh, you know and uh, 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 this is like a t over t c equal to 1. So, that is the transition line 
and this is the classical uh, expression which is PV by KT equal to constant. So, this classical and this is the BEC. Okay. So, uh, beyond BEC of course, uh, they start uh, you know I should not uh, like write it like this rather I should draw it like this and then carrying on there. So, this is the BEC let me just superimpose a red line such that it is clear. So, this is the BEC and then of course, uh, they become same. Okay. So, that is the uh, expression for the internal energy and um, the pressure you have already known, you already know the uh, how the number of particles behave and um, this is more or less you know the uh, discussion of uh, the Bose-Einstein condensate. So, let me uh, just give you a brief idea about this order of phase transitions. Um, so, this uh, old theory of phase transition uh, says that you know uh, if you order of free energy which becomes discontinuous gives you that uh, uh, order of phase transition. That means, uh, the free energy is always continuous if the first derivative of free energy becomes discontinuous which is like the entropy etcetera then you have a first order phase transition. If the second derivative of free energy becomes continuous then you have a second order phase transition and so on. So, the second derivative of free energy is nothing but uh, you know the uh, this specific heat. The specific heat is discontinuous then it is a second order phase transition. Now, here in BEC uh, the uh, C V is continuous or the specific heat is continuous I am just calling it a C V uh, is continuous, but D C V D T is discontinuous. is discontinuous. So, that tells in that old language uh, that this is like a third order phase transition, uh, but actually uh, a more modern uh, theory of phase transition tells you that if you can define an order parameter uh, for a phase transition then that is called as a second order phase transition and we have been able to identify an order parameter. So, what is an order parameter? Order parameter is a quantity which indicates a phase transition that is either say it goes to 0 or it diverges at t equal to that Tc. Suppose uh, you know water melts. Okay. So, one can take that uh, and water melts and uh, I mean melts means water uh, becomes vapor sorry uh, it is not water melts or the solid melts we can say. A solid melts uh, to a liquid can be taken as a phase transition then you can see that um, you know the uh, distance between the ionic distance or the atomic distance that becomes ill defined at t equal to Tc. So, it sort of is a molten solid uh, or uh, if you take it as uh, from uh, a ferromagnet to a, a paramagnet then you see that the magnetization goes to 0 across a phase transition. So, these are called uh, order parameters. Okay. So, uh, we have actually defined an order parameter in this particular case and uh, which is the uh, this condensate fraction because that condensate fraction goes to 0 as T tends to Tc. So, this in principle should be a second order phase transition and not going by that old uh, uh, you know definition of phase transition that which order uh, of the free energy becomes discontinuous. So, we will carry on with this notion that if we can define an order parameter for a phase transition that is a second order, if we cannot then it is a first order. Um, there is also another definition which says that uh, uh, this first order phase transitions uh, that uh, uh, involves latent heat and uh, second orders do not uh, involve latent heat. So, first order uh, phase transitions. Uh, we can write involves latent heat, uh, second order uh, phase transition do not involve latent heat okay? um, and we can define an order parameter. then it is a second order 
and where it is not possible to define then it is a first order. So, uh, we sort of uh, you know cut this long story short and we say that since we can define an order parameter it must be a second order phase transition does not matter if uh, this uh, specific heat is continuous. So, finally, let us look at the specific heat uh, which is nothing but the uh, this uh, derivative temperature derivative of the internal energy that we see there and uh, this involves a little bit of mathematics and uh, uh, basically the properties of this Bose-Einstein integral. I will just do it quickly and then there will be some tutorial questions that will clarify all these issues. So, uh, we calculate the specific heat. And uh, uh, so, u is equal to 3 by 2 n k t um, uh, g uh, 5 by 2 uh, z f and uh, g 3 by 2 z f. And uh, we talk about a temperature uh, T equal to uh, T c plus which means that uh, this the temperature is equal to just above the critical temperature or you can call it T c plus epsilon. So, this is uh, so Z f will uh, just deviate slightly from 1 this is what one I want to say. So, C v by n k just uh, divided by that. So, this is equal to 1 over n k uh, and uh, del u del t uh, n v this is equal to a 3 by 2 uh, we have to take this. Uh, so, it is a g 5 by 2 Z f um, and g 3 by 2 Z f. Um, plus a 3 by 2 t uh, del del t of uh, g 5 by 2 z f. Now, these uh, temperature dependencies come as I was telling you earlier that these are uh, important to know that what these dependencies are for z f and all that. And now, you have to take a uh, derivative with respect to temperature. The first term is due to de uh, taking a derivative which is linear in t. Now, use uh, a formula which can be derived in the tutorial. So, this is equal to uh, the derivative of these uh, Bose Einstein integral is nothing but 1 by z f uh, g n minus 1 z f. Okay. So, if you use this then this second term can be easily evaluated uh, and this is equal to g 5 by 2 z f. Um, and uh, g 3 by 2 z f and uh, this is equal to uh, g 3 by 2 z f uh, uh, del del t of uh, g 5 by 2 z f. I am just doing the u by v form uh, minus g 5 by 2 z f uh, divided by del I mean into del del t of g 3 by 2 z f and uh, this whole divided by g 3 by 2 square uh, z f. Okay. Without breaking the uh, in the chain of discussion there is some algebra of course, needed and you use this formula that you see here. Uh, it can be shown that uh, c divided by n k has this nice form which is equal to 15 by 4 uh, g 5 by 2 z f and a g 3 by 2 z f minus 9 by 4 g 3 by 2 z f divided by g half z f. Okay. Um, and uh, so, the classical limit can easily be um, obtained uh, at least let us see the first the classical limit and then we will see how it looks like as a function of temperature. So, in classical limit Uh, your g n z f is same as z f and for z f equal to much smaller than 1 that is away from the quantum limit. So, C v over n k is that famous relation that you are aware of it is 15 by 4 minus 9 by 4 which is equal to 3 by 2. Okay. So, that is a 3 by 2 r of these particles which only have one 
um, quadratic degree of freedom that is the kinetic energy okay so they are not interacting all right and uh, let me uh, show you this uh, the dependency here so here we have uh, shown a pressure so the pressure variation is what we have uh, shown and you see that uh, the right hand side is a normal phase and the left of this is a bc phase and these are like the transition line occurs here. So, the pressure is a constant for T less than Tc which is what we have said and the pressure starts decreasing as a function of this specific volume. Uh, these are the, the normal phase or the gaseous phase. So, the normal and the gaseous would mean the same thing. So, this gaseous phase is shown at two different temperatures T1 and T2 and your T2 is greater than uh, you know T1. So, T2 is this uh, uh, thing. Uh, so, T 2 is greater than T 1 and you have this V 1 C uh, and this V 2 C which are this critical uh, specific volumes which are related to this uh, again this temperature. Okay? And this is uh, the plot that you have for the specific heat uh, C over N K. Now, you see that it is sort of for the condensate side. So, this is the condensate uh, and uh, so it, it rises like this. Uh, and uh, then it sort of you know falls uh, like this and then becomes a constant at uh, T large uh, T much much greater than T c which is this value 3 over 2. Uh, so, uh, you see that uh, you can still have the specific heat has a kink like structure and this is uh, similar to the lambda uh, it looks like the uh, this letter lambda and that is why it is called as a close to I mean uh, you know they uh, it is called as a lambda point transition and so on. So, this uh, is the uh, behavior of the specific heat across the transition. You see that there is a kink and the kink is indicative of the fact that it uh, one is that it does not uh, involve latent heat which means that uh, if you are just below the transition and just after the transition then uh, you have some uh, heat. So, this is a second order phase transition. And um, uh, of course, the derivative of the specific heat uh, is discontinuous because of the kink there. We can also calculate this uh, amount of discontinuity and that will tell us that, um, uh, that C v in spite of being continuous, uh, we still have to term it as a second order phase transition. However, d c v d t is discontinuous because of the kink structure and uh, this is the classical uh, limit. And, and this is just, just here it is a gaseous phase. Okay. So, most of the discussion on Bose-Einstein condensation is done. Okay. We have gotten the thermodynamic quantities, pressure, internal energy, etcetera. We know that uh, uh, below a certain temperature, there is a macroscopic accumulation. Uh, in the ground state which is called as the Bose-Einstein condensate. Uh, a little bit of algebra is needed in order to understand this, but this is unavoidable because of this uh, complex forms of the Bose-Einstein integral. You see there is something in the denominator uh, which is like this uh, you know exponential beta epsilon minus mu um, uh, minus 1 and on all that and then uh, you know there is uh, uh, the behavior of uh, the Zf say for example, uh, which we have uh, or, or you can see the pressure expression. See till Tc there is a constant pressure and then it starts falling off. That falling off just beyond T equal to Tc has to be understood. So, that is why all these expansions of the Bose-Einstein um, uh, these uh, integrals they are becoming important. We have shown most of them if there is something needed we will uh, cover that up as well and anything any uh, thing that involves algebra uh, will be uh, you know pushed to the tutorials and uh, or the assignment problems. Okay. We will stop here now. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.